All right, everybody, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us. Beautiful day here at GMS Field in Tampa. I'd like to welcome uh, a ton of people who are plugged in on various channels, Yes Network, uh, Yankees.com, uh, Yes Network Facebook, Yankees Instagram. We've got it pretty much covered today. Uh, as we begin, I'd like to introduce the Sabathia family who's seated next to Cece. Of course, Amber, who's done so much for so many for so long in the Yankees family. It's great to have you here, along with children Carter, Jaden, and Saya. Uh, we're, we're, we're a man down today. Uh, little C, who's not that little anymore. He's, I think, tip-off, CC said, was 1 o'clock up north. He's in a basketball game, so we're thinking of him. Um, also, at this point, I know there's a lot of people who aren't here and we don't have the use of like a pan, so the people who are tuning in uh, on other outlets, it's important to note that, you know, we, I'm not counting by hand, but obviously we've got basically everybody here, pitchers and catchers who reported several days ago, um, a bunch of position players who've been across the street working out in advance of their report date, uh, baseball operations, clubhouse staff, support staff, uh, a number of people. Obviously, it's a testament to CC and the relationships he and, and Amber have built over the years. In the front row, from ownership, we have Hal and Jenny Steinbrenner. Uh, we also have uh, Kyle Thousand, who's CC's representative. Appreciate Kyle for being here. Uh, before we go any further, I'd just like to turn it over to CC for opening remarks. Yeah, just got nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, just wanted to you know, make this announcement that uh, this will, you know, 2019 will be my fi final season. Um, you know, I want to obviously thank a lot of people. Um, I wouldn't be here today, you know, 18 years in the big leagues without so many different people. Um, but I want to start with, uh, you know, my mom. She couldn't be here today, but, uh, you know, her, her sacrificing so much, uh, you know, for me as a kid to be able to get to this point, um, to live out my dream, um, I owe her the world. So, um, you know, I just want to say thank you to her. My wife, uh, my family, um, you know, everything that, you know, my wife is able to do for us as a family and uh, me as a player, as a, as a husband, as a person, um, I can honestly say I wouldn't be sitting here without you. So, uh, so definitely thank you. Um, the, the Yankees, the Steinbrenner fam family, um, thank you guys for believing in me in 2008, enough to bring me here and, uh, you know, cash convincing me. Um, you know, this is the perfect place for me to play, and it's been nothing but uh, but great for me in the community, um, on the field, in the Bronx, um, just all around. It's been uh, it's been great for everybody that's that's sitting here at this table. So, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, my teammates, um, past and present. Um, you know, uh, you guys mean so much to me. Uh, you know, all, all I ever wanted, uh, you know, for people to remember me as is just as a good teammate, and. Uh, you know, it means a lot to me for you guys to be sitting here today. I know, uh, you know, you guys are tired. I have a bunch of stuff to do today, but thank you guys for being here. Um, you know, and thank you to, to all my teammates and guys that helped me throughout the years um, to be able to get to this point. So um, that being said, I look forward to 2019 being the championship season for us. Um, me going out and giving everything I have um, and leaving it all out on the field. So um, thank you guys. Before we take questions, is uh I want to note that we passed out or are passing out and disseminating via email a couple of important things. One, obviously, being a very long list of uh, CC's career accomplishments. Uh, probably even more important than that, uh, the press release that CC's foundation put out in which uh, CC is going to, in I think almost every city, if not every city that you go to this year, will recognize uh, 42 members of the Boys and Girls Club and make a very special day in all those different venues. And then finally, uh, there's a quote sheet that, again, we're passing out and disseminating. And it's really a who's who testament to who CC is, You know, obviously not just as a player, but as a person. Uh, the mayor of Vallejo, LeBron James, Steve Kerr, a whole host of former uh, teammates, including Jim Tomei, uh, talking glowingly, obviously, about CC's accomplishments, obviously on the field, but also as, as a person. So uh, with that, we have. Uh, two wireless mics. We have a bunch of media here. If you'd kindly raise your hand, we can start the Q&A. Who has the first question for CeCe? Uh, Sweeney in the middle. 
Cece, when you first signed here and you imagined what it would be like to finish your career as a Yankee, how did the last 10 years play out compared to what you thought it might be like when you first got here? Uh, I had no idea what it, what it would be like. You know, I was, you know, coming here in 08, I was nervous and, you know, didn't really know um, what to expect. Um, but it's, it's been incredible, you know, from day one, you know, getting a chance to meet Andy Pettit, um, you know, have him have be like a big brother to me um, and just really embracing, you know, being here and being a Yankee. Um, it's, it's been a great ride, you know, being able to win the World Series, um, you know, open up a new stadium, you know, just so many countless different memories that I'll have um, and could take back with me, um, you know, throughout the years of being a Yankee. Um, you know, it's priceless. It's been, it's been great. Who else? Buster in the middle again. CC, this year, your last year, why now? Why now? It's time. <laughs> uh, you know, my knee, uh, you know, just the shape that it's in, um, you know, uh, my family's getting older. Obviously, you can see my kids are getting older. Um, you know, it's time for me to be with them and, um, you know, be around them. You know, my, my oldest son now couldn't be here because he's playing high school sports. So this is a lot of stuff that I'm missing that I would like to be around and, you know, kind of hang out with them and, um, you know, start traveling and do some different things and, um, just really taking interest in my family, though. Uh, Chris, the back left. CC, you signed the deal to come back here and finish out your career with the Yankees. How much does it mean for you to wrap it up with this ball club? Yeah, that was something that was really important to me. Um, the last two years, really. Um, going into last year, I didn't really know um, if I would play this year. Um, so, you know, that was important for me to be able to sign back. You know, Kyle um, Thousand did a great job. Um, you know, get me back here. He only had one team to deal with. <laughs> there was, you know, no other place that I wanted to play. So, um, you know, him and Cash getting the deals done um, the last two years have been great. And, you know, I'm thanking them um, tremendously for me for being able to finish my career here. Coley, do you have a question to the right? Okay, so we understand the why of this being happening now, but how long did this decision take? How did you come to this decision that you wanted to make this year last year? How, how long do you think? I don't think it took that long. <laughs> I think it was just like when you know, you know. Yeah, I think uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't want to like overstay my welcome. I guess you know, I didn't want to just you know, I wanted to be effective and be able to go out and feel like I ha have a chance to help the team win. Um, and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still able to do that. You know, I don't know anything past this year and didn't really want to put that pressure on myself. Um, being able to go out and know this is my last year and just give everything, um, I think I think hopefully that will turn out good for me and, and not, you know, try to save something for 2020 or, you know, years after that. Um, this is it. This is the final year. Just go and, and see what happens. Brian and Brendan on the right. CC, in making the decision, was it mostly the knee or did your recent health scare also have something to do with it? Oh, no, the, the health scare um, – you know, I hadn't, I was, my mind was already made up before I had the heart thing. Um, but that just added to it, you know, just, you know, that, that health scare um, and just, you know, kind of, you know, seeing what was important to me and, and, you know, how much my family is important to me and, and wanting to be around for them and, and, uh, you know, just trying to take care of the, take, take care of myself the best way possible. And, um, but yeah, I mean, my mind was already made up before, before December that, this is going to be my last year, so. Um, but all those factors played in. Brandon, what do you think you'll miss most? What do I think I miss most? My teammates, for sure. Um, I mean, it's not even not the competition, not being out there, just being with the guys, the plane rides, um, spring training, hanging out, going to games, different things. Um, you know, I, I mean, I feel like these guys keep me young. You know, I'm 38 years old now. I'm the oldest guy in the clubhouse, but. Um, you know, just being able to be around these guys um, just keeps you young and keeps you in it. And um, But I know I'll miss those guys the most, for sure. Uh, Randy and Andy to the right. Yeah. CC, people talk about your leadership and how good you are with younger players. At some point later on, would you like to be a pitching coach, a manager, maybe go to the minors and work with young kids? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely love to be around the organization and, um, you know, come in here to spring training and, and help these guys out and different things. But as far as the travel and with these guys, the coaches, what they, what they go through and the demand that they have, you know, helping us out, um, I just see the hours that they put in. And it's a lot of work. And, and uh, 
you know, yeah, I, I want to relax. <laughs> Andy. See, so you mentioned Andy Pettit before. You, you were here with that core four group, and now you're here all these years later with a new group of, of young Yankees. How's being a Yankee changed over the years, and what makes this group that you're leaving unique? I think uh, I don't think anything changed about, about uh, being a Yankee. I think, um, you know, you come in here every day wanting to be professional and, and wanting to put your best foot forward and, and uh, you know, try to win a championship. And I think, uh, you know, those core four group, that core four group um, instilled that in me and Guardy and, and the guys that are still here for this group now. And, and it's, it's, all, it's always the same message, you know, whether it's Gator or when Yogi was here. Um, it's about being a Yankee and, and being professional and, going out winning games, and um, that message is always clear when you got these guys around. Other questions back to Buster in the middle. CeCe, you mentioned your teammates. I'm assuming you've let them know as time has gone along that this is, this is going to be it for you. Can you relate some of those conversations, some of the funny responses that you got from them? Um, yeah, uh, Sevy this morning, he was, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> no, you know, I'm not, but, um, you know, Dylan, um, you know, I've been playing with Dylan for a long time, you know, most of, all of his big league career. So, you know, it'll be hard, you know, to, to leave those guys. But, um, you know, a lot of my teammates that I played with before, like Chris Young, was like, it's about time, you know. So a lot of the older guys uh, understand where I'm coming from and, um, you know, get, get this decision. Before we take a few more, actually, I want to give <clears throat> CeCe and Amber a chance, <clears throat> excuse me, to talk about uh, the Boys and Girls Club initiative. And I think I misspoke. I said 42 kids. It's obviously 52. So, Amber, would you like to speak to it? 42 would have been a good number to do that. <laughs> but if we can impact 10 more, we will. So uh, 52 kids. So we're calling it CC, uh, CC's Legacy, Legacy Tour, spelled with two Cs. Um, hashtag Legacy. So that will be the hashtag of this tour. And every city that CC goes in for the last time, we will bring 52 kids from the Boys and Girls Club um, Pitch In has partnered with the Boys and Girls Club many of times, but they're really our heart. Um, from kids in the Bronx to all over, we do a lot of work with the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, CC believes that if it wasn't for the club, he wouldn't be here today. So in any way, we can be impactful and give back. Um, but this last year, we really want to be impactful and give back and um, be more of a role model and be hands-on, and to be able to do that in every city, we feel like is just a, way, a great way for CC to leave his legacy. Thanks, Amber. Uh, Jack, did you have a question in the middle? That's actually a good segue because I was going to say, what would you describe as your legacy? What have you left out there on the field that you want people to be able to say about your career? Just somebody that, that you know, played hard every time out, um, that you could visibly see if you went to go see him pitch, that he left everything out there every, every start. Um, that would just be the biggest thing for me. And, just like I said, just just a, a good teammate. You know, if if uh, if I can get that from you know a lot of the guys that I play with, I feel like I've accomplished my goal. Chris in the back left. This is for everybody, actually. CC first for you. What's it going to be like to be at home after 19 years in the big leagues and being with your family and Amber and the kids? What's it going to be like to have him around? Uh, for me, I think it's going. I think it's going to be fun. Um, you know, I, I love the off season when I'm just being able to, to, you know, hop in a minivan and drive these kids around everywhere, basketball practice, dance, different things. So, um, you know, hopefully, um, I could be a help. You know, she's a single mother pretty much for six months out of the year um, while I'm gone. So, you know, hopefully, I can be that helping hand for her. Answer. What? <laughs> what would it be like when you having me home? Um, it would sometimes be embarrassing, um, <laughs> because, because, um, I don't know, and, <laughs> um, you gonna be excited at me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I know that'll be two times funnier in the house, because you're funny and mom's funny, so. <laughs> Because I never see him, so <laughs> during the season. So when he's home, it feels like we have a whole family together. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, I think 
I feel the same way because you, you usually never see him a lot, and um, so it'll be better like for him to come to my dance recitals and like show all of his love and support that he's brought without the years. So. Yeah. That's I had made the comment one time that Cece, we well I have been cheering for him for like 22 years because I even Kinston and Akron and all that stuff, but. Uh, uh, we've been cheering for so many years, so I'm excited for him to cheer for us. I run, so he can come to the races, and he can be at the finish line for me, and he can go to Carter's basketball games all the time and not miss any. The girls dance recitals, and he could just cheer us on for, for a little bit. So that's what I'm excited about. Nicely said. Do we have one or two more? Buster, in the middle again. Cece, you mentioned your mom. Uh, can you relate the conversation you had with her when you told her that this was going to be it? Um, I don't really remember, like, a, um, you know, one conversation. We talked so much um, throughout throughout the day and different things. I, um, you know, I kind of felt like she, she knew that this was going to be my last year. Um, and, you know, so, you know, after I had the heart scare, she came out. Um, and she's been with us ever since, you know, you know just helping out around the, the house with the family, with – you know, the kids, taking them around. She's just such a big help um, to our family, and, you know, the kids love having her around. And um, But but uh, just one conversation I don't think we had, but I, I know she's excited um, for me for this, la this last season and, um, you know, her being able to watch it and, um, you know, me just kind of live out this, this dream that uh, her and my dad have for me. I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, uh, my dad not being able to be, be able here to see this. Um, you know, he always told me that I'll play for the Yankees and, when I was in Cleveland, I'd be like, no, no chance. Like, I'm going to stay in India my whole career. And, you know, he always said, when you're a free agent, the, the Yankees are going to come get you. You're going to win the World Series with the Yankees. So, for me to be able to live out that dream for him, uh, it's great. But I just wish he was here to see it. Uh, James, in the, uh, on the left, in the back. Just to see out of curiosity's sake, did you see this, like, list of uh, quotes that they had gotten from these figures from... I haven't seen Steve it yet. Did, Zillow told me about from, it. Like, Steve Kerr to um, LeBron James and stuff. Did you hear about that? Uh, kind of coming together and what do you think of everyone from Fat Joe is on there too <laughs> that's my guy <laughs> no it's just uh it's awesome to, to see that and you know for, for Zillow to reach out to those people and you know for them to be able to take the time to, to you know write a nice message is, is, is awesome and um, I'm looking forward to seeing it and reading it and hopefully not crying <laughs> <laughs> any last one Jack uh -huh. yeah. in the middle CC, as long as this year plays out the way I'm sure you envision, you're going to end your career with more than 250 wins, more than 3,000 career strikeouts. How much thought have you given to whether or not that's a Hall of Fame career for you? Uh, I, I haven't put you know that much thought into it just because I don't have a vote <laughs> and and I can't do anything about it. But um, you know, you know, being able to have those numbers attached to your name just just means a lot for me. Um, you know, I never really played the game for, you know, individual accomplishments like that, you know, two, 200 wins, 3,000 strikeouts, any things like that. But to have those numbers compiled um, just means that I was on good teams around good players and, you know, was lucky enough to, to have some good catchers calling some good games for me. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be fun to look back on all that stuff once I'm done playing. Um, but right now I'm just focused on trying to win the championship and, and uh, have a parade at the end of the year. That would be yes. the great way to top this thing off. Right, Carter? Yep. And I've never even been to one. Nope. Nope. No, you weren't born yet. You were a World Series baby. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> Watch me partying. I think that's a good way to end it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, see Amber, kids, if you could stay there. We're going to take a photo up there with you guys. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>